वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग so i have no interest uh rather no financial interest and i disclose that but i have too much interested in uh, spreading the ecmo awareness and after a two and almost uh, two days complete and this topic is uh, is a different topic uh, this is known as uh, half ecmo uh, whenever the patients require not to support the oxygenation but to for the only uh, the increased uh, co2 the hypercapnia we use this kind of thing so my topics will be uh, divided in defini uh, definition origin of the concept clinical evidence types complications like other uh, speakers and i found i have written lot of uh, unnecessary slides i will go through this uh, the first slide is the what is ecod ecod is a technique with a part partial respiratory support that achieves control of carbon dioxide from the blood through a low blood flow zero uh, up from 400 to 1 liter per minute without significant effect on the blood oxygenation so uh, the beauty of the carbon dioxide is it's a very uh, diffusible uh, gas and it can be easily taken out by using lower flows so that is the concept of uh, deviating from the proper ecmo when you are uh, you want to take out the carbon dioxide uh, only to a lower flow system through an ecod device so uh, with that thing uh, the history started long back in 1978 with uh, theodor kolobo Uh, with this breathing uh, control of breathing using extracorporeal membrane lung and they have found uh, that alveolar ventilation was proportional decrease in the alveolar uh, ventilation is proportional to the fraction of the total carbon dioxide removed by the membrane lung and when extracorporeal co2 removal approximated the carbon dioxide production alveolar ventilation almost ceased so with that thing they have used in this technique uh, on those days in patients with uncontrolled bronchopleural fistulas where the <clears throat> ventilation was almost impossible you can't ventilate whatever you're giving going through that uh, leak and the co2 is mounting up so they devised something to take out the carbon dioxide through an extracorporeal site so that without using the lung and if they can avoid the positive pressure now uh, after that lot of uh, publications came from dr gattinoni and uh, theodor kolobo with low frequency positive pressure ventilation with extracorporeal uh, and then started they that uh, shifted this idea where they are finding this acute ards situations with the uh, decreasing in the uh, tidal volume with the permissive hypercapnia and hypercapnia will be managed by this extracorporeal circuit so practically speaking if you uh, see that uh, this extracorporeal co2 removal has actual two roles number one is the type 2 pure type 2 respiratory failures where patients are basically coming with a mainly hypercapnia like advanced copd like a 75 year old copd who had got admitted in your hospital many a times before and relatives or he himself doesn't want to go for uh, ventilation but his uh, co2 level is more than 100 and he came to you as drowsy what you are going to his uh, is maintaining oxygenation but he cannot take out the co2 level because of the acute exacerbation so what to do with that patients and second one the patients of acute ards whom very high pressures of the lung you want don't want to give too much of tidal volume to decrease the barotrauma volotrauma and lot of atelectrotrauma whatever the things are there and there is a mounting of carbon dioxide that is known as a pipe permissive hypercapnia and you want to reduce that so with it's a conjoined uh, technique of using low tidal volume and with the 
to may, uh, keep the, uh, uh, the carbon dioxide at the level of the permissive vapor capnia level with uh, CO2 removal. So these are the two indications where this e cord is going to be uh, helpful. Lot of publications came uh, with different results. Few of the publications shows the expected mortality is more than 90%. Lung function improved in 72.8%. So these are the uh, publications we'll found everywhere uh, in the net. And this is one uh, the article from the Morris and Wallace CJ, and they have done there's no significant difference in survival between the mechanical ventilation and the extracorporeal CO2 removal groups. We do not so they have re, do, uh, not recommended any uh, CO2 removal is going to be a helpful technique in giving good outcome. But after that, uh, we adopted this technique slowly with a good understanding that it can be used as an adjunctive uh, therapy in ARDS. And this uh, uh, article came in 2000 where uh, people are using a lot of, uh, started using this uh, low tidal volume thing in ARDS. To cut this carbon dioxide level, we have started using extracorporeal um, uh, CO2 removal as an adjunct to the ARDS. So uh, if you see the tidal volume reduction in patients with acute lung injury when plateau pressure is also high, so these uh, uh, papers came out and the problems of mechanical ventilation also went down with the using of lower tidal volumes along with the CO2 removal techniques in ARDS. So uh, soon the lung protective ventilation thing came with the tidal volume of less than 6 ml per kg and plateau pressure of less than 30 with the permissive hypercapnia and again you are using lung, ultra protective lung ventilation with tidal volume of less than 4 ml per kg with a plateau pressure of less than 25 with the CO2 was mounting up and just to control that you can do that uh, thing uh, known as e -core. So we know all that uh, what are the effects of hypercapnia uh, uh, in, in the lung and the hemodynamics. It, in, in, it enhances the pulmonary vasoconstriction, increase mean arterial pressure, increase RV afterload and lead to an RV failure. So we have to take control of the carbon dioxide to a level, uh, at least it should be kept between 50 to 60 during the ARDS things. And uh, obviously low tidal, uh, this is the paper which came out with the using of this pumpless extracorporeal lung assist device with lower, uh, further lower tidal volume strategy of less than 3 ml per kg. Now, this was the study done by uh, Dr. Alan Coombs and uh, Marco Ranieri, the supernova study, uh, properly randomized study with the feasibility of safety all e to enhance protective ventilation in acute uh, ARDS. It facilitates the ultra protective ventilation, uh, tidal volume of 4 ml per kg with a plateau of 12, less than 25 in patients with moderate ARDS. Look, this study has been done in moderate ARDS and uh, with the, along with the ultra protective lung strategy with e -core. And they found uh, they, there are 95 patients enrolled and uh, ECOR was maintained for 5 days. They uh, found the 6 uh, uh, severe adverse events reported, 2 of them attributed to ECOR and brain hemorrhage and pneumothorax. Uh, ECOR uh, was reported 39% uh, of the patient, ECOR adverse events and 59 patients were alive till discharge. So that was a good study which came out uh, with the uh, establishment of the ECOR techniques. Now there came the eclair study, a lot of studies uh, uh, for this adjunctive role in the ARDS came out. And then also the ECOR came out as a COPD, what you are telling, the purely hypercapnic patients where uh, 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 they are using ECOR technique. ECOR, what, uh, how the help, uh, it helps in COPDs, it decreases alveolar ventilation demand, lower respiratory rate, increase expiratory time. So it actually increases the carbon dioxide elimination and decreases the carbon dioxide production. It helps physiologically also in COPD patients. And uh, the, if you uh, go to the physiology again, 200 ml CO2 we produce per minute. CO2 is mainly carried out of the plasma. That's why I told you it's very easily diffusible. It can be taken out like a CO2 removal rate can be uh, easily uh, maintain at the less than one liter of per minute blood flow. So normal ECMO flows, larger ECMO flows are not required and CO2 diffuses more readily than oxygen uh, in the uh, extracorporeal membrane. So coming to the methods, how we, these are the uh, scientific basis of using ECOR. Now, how we do this, this has to be uh, uh, known. 
E chord, uh, it can be divided in uh, this art, uh, arteriovenous E chord, early forms of venovenous E chord and the modern systems of the venovenous E chord. Out of that, uh, different E chord systems are there. Uh, one was the pumpless system, that is the uh, arteriovenous. Here, no oxygenator or mechanical pump is uh, the mechanical pump is used. We put an arterial cannula, we put a venous cannula. Because of the arterial pressure, it uh, uh, creates the carbon dioxide gradient, and the carbon dioxide comes out. The problem is again with the arterial cannulation and the cardiac failure, hemodynamic instability. You cannot use that pumpless systems of that is the arteriovenous. We no uh, uh, no more use this. And this is the uh, configuration, one placed in arterial cannula, one placed in the venous cannula and the arterial pressure actually drives the uh, blood through the oxygenator and takes out the carbon dioxide through that. And this is the way we do this. This is known as PECLA. VVE cord is the today's technique what we use regularly. The uh, few uh, uh, industry circuits are there. There is ILA active centrifugal pump with a diagonal flow. DCAP system, I will come to that later on pump assisted lung protection spalp and the hemolung system costly but they are effective ILA active again uh, they uh, do different uh, flow rates and uh, it has a 0.5 to 4.5 liter per minute it can be used as an ECMO also decap the system what we are using regularly in uh, the hospitals the the patients uh, the blood taken out uh, it goes through a lung membrane again it goes through a filter and uh, uh, through that the carbon dioxide taken out the plasma filled plasmatic water is again gone back to the um, uh, circuit before the membrane oxygenator make it diluted more efficient co2 removal and the uh, uh, the more less requirement of the heparin actually the membrane lung and the uh, uh, this um, filter as is uh, connected in the series that i'll show you and this is a hemolung system. These are uh, the, uh, the industry driven systems are there. Now you can use a core as a part of the CRRT. You can take out the blood from the CRRT where you are uh, actually um, uh, through it goes through a membrane lung, then it goes through a hemofilter, and then uh, 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 the CRRT goes on. So you can connect a membrane lung. A oxygenator in your CRRT circuit to take out the CO2 and where you are uh, put the sweep gas in the system and sweep gas is out of that way that is the way you can and there are a lot of adverse events reported obviously which were mainly related to the cannulations and the bleeding anticoagulation system that will be taken care in the other uh, lectures uses I told the bridge to recovery in severe hypercapnia mainly COPD advanced COPD patients ARDS at an adjunct therapy of the low tidal volume ventilation Acute exercise COPD or uh, asthma, thoracic surgery uh, uh, during that uh, uh, typical uh, bronchopleural fistula, and sometimes a bridge to transplant patients where CO2 was mounting up on the waiting for the transplant, lung transplant patients. And limitations it doesn't give any uh, uh, help for the oxygenation. If you want, the, uh, there is a worsening of hypoxia, you have to go back to the ECMO. And definitely no, no guidelines and obviously the uh, it cannot be used uh, because of the low catheter size in pediatric patients. Uh, this is the ECOR diagram. We are taking the patient, uh, the blood out from the uh, patient, going through a pump and pushing that blood to an oxygenator where uh, the oxygen is connected with the sweep gas and you are going back the, after the carbon dioxide taking out, it is going back to the uh, patient. Now, uh, two cases are there. There is a 28-year-old male admitted with fever in three days, respiratory distress, uh, typical ARDS patient. Uh, this was the picture and uh, uh, this was the before intubation. Uh, the PO2 was 20, uh, PCO2 was 28, PO2 39, after intubation proning, PCO2 89, PO2 73. Uh, then uh, improving all this, PO, F, with the FiO2 70, we managed a PO2 of 171, but the PCO2 is 78, where the pH is 7.23. Then uh, we took that patient on uh, a core. So uh, this is the circuit, if you can see, if you have any question, you can ask me after this. Uh, that is the oxygenator, the pediatric oxygenator, which allows a flow up to 1 liter. and and hemofilter which is connected in the series and the uh, 
sweep gas flow is connected over there. You can see the uh, blood is uh, uh, coming out, uh, uh, coming in the oxygenator, uh, and blood is coming out of the oxygenator and is entering to the filter. And you have this sweep gas flow which is connected over here. downstream uh, uh, kept uh, for the uh, beyond the oxygenator because uh, I told you in the decap, we, this is a modified decap system where the filter resistance is actually producing more efficient CO2 removal on the membrane lung. So this is the way we do. Just look at the thing, this is a very reproducible technique you can practice in your place without an ECMO machine and this is the, through a, uh, uh, your normal dialysis machine or the CRRT machine. This is the second case, 85-year-old uh, male we, uh, with the fever, calf running nose uh, came to us and uh, got intubated, had ET tube dislodgement and then re-intubated and this was his lung, it's a severe uh, uncontrolled asthma. ABG was like that, uh, uh, PCO2 was 93 and PO2 was 99 with the FiO2 of 40%. So oxygenation was not a problem but we could not come down on the level. We tried uh, uh, for two days with uh, change of uh, ventilatory settings but we could not do and uh, ETCO2 remained around 70 with the PCO2 of more than 100. And then we, uh, this was the ventilator area, the peak pressure was mounting more than 40 and uh, uh, we had been distressed so uh, we have been called and we started a call on day 5 with the same technique and uh, we put a dialysis catheter and the flow around uh, we give 500 to 600 and this is the technique this is the dialysis machine used for an accord it slowly came down on the oxygenator and, and the, we uh, also taken the patient on uh, sevoflurane because the, there's a law a, a silent chest and the bronchospasm was going on it also to uh, take care of the uh, uh, this bronchospasm thing and it was continued. On day three, uh, there was a clogging of the oxygenator. So we had to change the oxygenator. There is a sudden rise in uh, PCO2 which was coming down with that. And slowly uh, everything started improving. As the PCO2 goes down, the requirement of vasopressors went down. Uh, his uh, requirement of um, sedation came down. And on, finally on day 13, we could take out of him from the accord with a normal carbon dioxide level and this was the x-ray you can see the uh, dynamic hyperinflation has been resolved and he was put on um, CPAP and we uh, this was the uh, ABG with a 40 PCO2 of 138 PO2 on CPAP and we could extubate with these are the hemodynamics with 39 um, uh, ETCO2 with that hemodynamics and we could extubate him. So this is a very reproducible technique, even if you have uh, don't have that uh, ECMO machine in your center, you can do it with your dialysis machine, provided there is an isolated hypercapnia or it is an adjunct the management of ARDS where you are using the lower tidal volumes to protect the lung and to make a hypercapnia within the permissive level you can use it as an adjunct so any doubts i am ready to answer ma'am